Hey VIP, Stephanie from Mrs. D's Corner. Welcome to today's VIP exclusive live. Today we're going to be talking all about IEP work bins um, and regular work bins, task bins, work boxes, task boxes, whatever you call them. We're going to be talking about them today and I kind of have some here that I have brought home with me from my last classroom and also some stuff that I kind of collect just to put into IEP bins that I keep in here. So I'm going to go through all of that. I also printed off all of your questions from the event page of this live so that I can go through and answer all of them. So the first thing that I want to do is say welcome. I'm so excited that you're here and that we're talking about IEP work bins. I do want to preface this and say I personally myself don't feel like I'm a master at this. Um, but I can certainly and will certainly be sharing things that have worked for me and kind of how I do it in my self-contained classroom, so the last classroom that I was in, and just kind of give you some pointers and tips and things that I've done that may be helpful to you. So always to keep in mind is to just kind of take notes. Um, if you like something, try it out. If you don't think it's going to work, you can tweak it and make it work for you. So that's really what all of this is about is just getting new ideas and then kind of changing them a little bit and making them all work for you. So welcome, come in. I'm so excited that you're here. So let's get started. IEP work bins and work boxes, task boxes. Um, I think they're two completely separate things. So IEP work bins to me are different than like the regular task boxes, task bins, work bins, whatever you want to call them. If it has IEP in front of it, that to me is a little different. That means those are specifically gauge towards my students IEP goals and how I make that work for me is I will have a box for each student in my classroom for an IEP work bin with different things inside of the bin that are directly relatable to what my students current IEP goals are. So I wanted to show you these bins. I should have taken one out. Um, but I have a bunch of stuff in here. These bins I actually got last week at Target. They are enormous. They've never had them before, and I'm gonna be using these for IEP work bins this year because one, I can color code them, and two, they're big enough, they're bigger than these, which are about the size of a shoe box. They're big enough to hold a bunch of different things in it. So, I like this size, the bigger size. There's also, you can use like these, Whatever kind of containers you want to use from wherever, if you want it to have a lid, if you don't want it to have a lid, get what works for you. So my last classroom, I had a lot of storage. I had a lot of shelving, a lot of cabinets, so I was able to store them all like this. If you don't have that kind of storage and you need to kind of put it in a cabinet and or be able to stack them, then you're definitely going to want to go with something that has a lid on it. These are from Lakeshore Learning. They are the same ones that I use for color coding my classroom as well, except they come in clear. And they also have lids that you can purchase separately to go with them. I like that they're clear because then I can see exactly what is inside of a bin and my Paris can see exactly what is inside of this bin. So these color coded bins, I got these at Target last week. So they're new. Um, I will share the UPC code to them. I'll take a picture of one and share it in the group outside of this live after this. So you guys can call your targets and ask them for it because I think they're like $3 a piece, which is a steal because they're enormous. So the first thing you want to do is determine like what kind of bin is going to be great for your class and then determine do you want to do IEP work bins? Do you want to do work bins? Do you want to do both? Um, to me, they're separate. So for IEP work bins, I use something that is bigger. Now, when it comes to determining what is going to go inside of a work bin for IEPs, I look directly at what my students' IEPs say. Like, what goals are they working on? What things are we working on? So how do I find all of these different pieces of, of lessons, essentially, and resources and manipulatives to meet all the needs of my kids for their IEPs? Basically what I've done over the last, this will be year nine, so the last eight years, is I've really just collected the basics. Um, things like, and I put them all in here, so things like money. All of our kids are working on money goals, or the majority of our kids are working on money goals. So I keep play money because I know that I am always going to have a need for play money, whether it is in... A regular work bin if it's a lesson we're going to be working on or I have students specifically working on IEP goals I always keep play money because I'm always going to need it you can also if you're working specifically on coins I do use real coins as well but I like to have I'm not gonna put real dollar bills y'all in those so I like to keep the play money around as well I like to have different kinds of counters so these are one of the counters I got in my kindergarten box 
Um, I just kept them because I like that they're double-sided, they're foam, so they're really versatile. I use them for a bunch of different counting things, making patterns, more or less, things like that. So just things you can use for multiple things, for multiple topics, I guess. I got these at the, not the Dollar Tree, at the Goodwill. They are ETA Q's in their rods, um, $1.99 for this bag. I felt like it was a steal. I just feel like I'm always going to need these rods, whether it's um, making fractions. So these ones are all different sizes. They're not like the ten, base 10 with the ones and the hundreds. But I keep these because we're, I always have students that are eventually going to be working on fractions. If I have first and second graders that are going to stay with me through fourth grade, they're going to eventually be working on fractions. And even if we're just doing halves, it's nice to have these different options around. I also have a set over on my bookshelf over here of the base 10, the singulars, and the hundreds. So I do have those as well. I love keeping these. They're called Lincoln Learns. These are from Learning Resources. I think I got them off of Amazon a couple of years ago. I love these things. My kids love these things. They think these are a toy, which is great because when they're using them, they're actually working on fine motor to get them to link. So you can use these for syllables, for spelling words. You can use them for counting, for sorting, or just as a fine motor task. They're great for a bunch of different things. So my recommendation to you is to just kind of keep stock for yourself on a bunch of different manipulatives on basic skills. Things that you know you are always going to have to teach and reinforce, like addition, subtraction, money, time, fine motor. Those things are things that I've been collecting forever. Other great things, other great, I want to keep, don't want to keep saying things, other great resources that you can keep collecting or kind of make and prep over the summer that are going to be great for your classroom are going to be like file folder games, your adapted work binders, um, your adapted piece book sets, adapted books, task boxes, all of those things you can either purchase on TPT or you can download for free on the internet. You'll, those things are always going to be beneficial to you as well. So you want to stock up on those whenever you have a moment or free chance to kind of prep those things because sometimes they take a little bit longer. So what do I do with all of these resources? That was one of the big questions. When I'm not putting all of these items into work bins what, or into IEP work bins or work bins, where am I storing all of this? In my last classroom, I was very, very lucky to have a lot of storage. So I was just kind of keeping all the manipulatives inside of baggies. And so I would have like a big tote, probably this size, just like a white Sterlite tote from Walmart. And I would have um, gallon baggies with things labeled and I would just keep them all in there. That is how I store all of my stuff. It's not super organized, I guess. Um, or like cutesy or anything, but it was what worked for me. I was able to go through. I knew what was in there basically because everything was labeled. I could see in the bag. So that's pretty much how I store it. Now, if they're file folder games or they're worksheets or adapted books or things like that, I store them in, they're called project cases. And I will link them after. I should have linked them through here so y'all can grab it for Amazon Prime Day. But they're project cases. And instead of keeping all of my file folders, even if I'm like keeping a file folder for Christmas and all of my Christmas stuff is in there, I have a project case for each month and the project case is plastic. You can fit file folders inside of it. So I literally keep all the things inside of it and then those fit inside of my file box or my file cabinet. They fit inside the big metal filing cabinets. I left them um, at my last classroom, but you can store all of your things in there. So all your papers, if you have papers that you just wanna keep for Stephanie's IEP and you're gonna have the student for a couple of years, get that student their own project case and just kind of keep things in there that you know you're gonna be using with that student. It's a great option to store papers and things like that. Other than that, get bins, pl plastic baggies, they're fantastic, and just kind of keep them however you have room for in your classroom. I know some of us have a lot of storage, some of us don't. So it's really whatever's gonna work for your classroom. Okay, so when it comes to IEP work bins, what are some things, I wanna show you some things and I've linked them all above for different things that I have prepped that I keep year to year that can work with a majority or a bunch of different IEP goals, whether it's math or English, they kind of cross a bunch of different topics off the list. So um, adaptive piece book sets, I shared this in the live I did on progress monitoring.
So this one is free. Chicka Chicka Boom Boom is free on my website in the resource library. Adapted books are great. You can either, they're monthly sets. You can either prep the monthly sets and put them in bins or I keep them up on the, like I have the bookshelf and then I have like a wire rack where all of my books for the month, like back to school's coming. So back to school books are going to be up there. I'll put the adapted piece book sets up there. Once we've read the book in the class and I'm changing out books, then I'll put them in a work bin. Or maybe I'll prep two and keep this one in there. Or maybe I have a student specifically working on the alphabet. I would put this in their work bin or in a work box that's targeted for the alphabet. So you can do adapted books, um, which I also have here. So these are a different adapted books. These are also linked above. These are for setting the table you can keep those in your different work bins as well. They cover a variety of topics. You can either print one that's gonna meet all of your goals and put it in a work bin for all of your students to go through or print one specifically for some of your kids. Social stories are great to put in IEP work bins as well. I like these because you can target fine motor at the same time because you're moving Velcro. You can do vocabulary, spelling, you can do um, reading and comprehension. I mean, there are a bunch of different targets that you can meet with adaptive books. So I would like to put this one, this one would go into a work bin, not an IEP work bin. I would put the how to set the table um, adapted book into a regular work bin or task box, task, task bin. There's so many different names for them. Um, because this one has setting the table uh, math that goes with it, the comprehension test. And then I would probably put, I did grab some, uh, these are visual recipes. I would probably put past recipes or maybe the upcoming recipe that we'd be doing for Fun Food Friday. I would put the either the work binder page or the cut and paste that we're going to be doing, put it into a work bin with how to set the table or maybe, maybe an adapted book on manners while you're eating or different things for cooking in the classroom, classroom kitchen safety, things like that. I would create an entire work bin based on just Fun Food Friday because all of my students participate. So it's great for them to have those constant reminders. So you can put adapted books, anything you're doing in the classroom, your visual recipes. I mentioned these in the spelling, the spelling words, sight words video that I did previously. You can do your sight words, keep it in the video, um, sight words file folder, which I've linked above as well. This is great for spelling for your students who aren't writing. You could put this in a writing bin because uh, for our students that don't have the ability to quite yet write, they can do it this way, spell all of their sight words, so that's great for that. What else did I grab? Oh, we have sorting mats. So you can put different sorting mats into your work bins. These are things that you could prep, not necessarily, I mean, you can buy them and prep them and keep them forever, or you can buy like, these are dinosaur counters. Actually, they're erasers that I got at Target. Um, this is a color sorting bin. Um, I have like a match game that I have. I have different cards that I just made for my class for word families. And I have for core vocab, I have the sped strips that I created to work on creating sentences with my students who use core, um, core vocabulary on their AC, AAC devices. I have some different adapted piece book sets. I just grabbed a bunch of stuff from what I have here at my house that you could put into both an IEP work bin or a task box, task bin. I guess the task boxes are the littler ones, right? So task bins. Um, something else that you could also put into, which is also, a f it's also free in the resource library is a prompting hierarchy. This would be great, a reminder for your paraprofessionals if you're having them do your work bins or IEP bins with your students. It's a great visual for them to have. Um, with the prompting hierarchy. So I pulled that out to show you guys. So let's talk, I'm gonna answer some of your questions now. And if you have other questions that I've not quite yet answered, I kind of know that I know I'm all over the place with this, um, but I wanna answer just some of the questions that you had in the event page. So do you have data sheets for your centers and job boxes? I do not, only because we use the binder rings and posty notes to collect data on everything. And the, it is linked above the video on data collection and progress monitoring is linked above. It's the video replay from within this group. So you can click the link to watch the video after about how I collect data and all of that stuff. I don't have specific data collection sheets for these task bins, tax boxes, IEP bins. Storage for the ones not being used, how often are they using it? Are they stored together or does it have, like each kid has their own spot? 
So I kind of went over that a little bit. IEP bins are different from work bins. Work bins, so these would be considered work bins to me. To me, they are work bins. These are things that are in my classroom that I'm gonna change out depending on the master, like the mastery level of my student. So if it's still a skill that they're struggling with, I might change out some of the prompting within there. So if I am doing file folders and maybe I need a lower level file folders for just matching instead of like matching the word triangle to a triangle, maybe I'll just have match triangle to a triangle. Does that make sense? So I will change them off based on my student's need. I also like to add in some that are seasonal, usually not too many. Um, Typically when it starts to be like Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and then winter and Valentine's Day and Black History Month and Dental Health Awareness Month, like you have all these holidays that kind of just come at you like once October hits. So I try to do some fun, more fun, they're all fun to me, but more fun work bins for my kids at around that time because they're excited for Halloween. They're excited to dress up. They're excited for Thanksgiving. They love food or maybe they're excited for, you know, fall break. They love Christmas because they get a week or two off. So I want them to be excited about learning. So I want them to see things that they're familiar with and get them excited. And that may even lead into a conversation about, you know, whatever that's about. What are you going to do for Thanksgiving? You know, um, so it leads into communication, which is also social skills. It kind of leads into everything as well. Um, how often they're using it, it really depends. I, in my last classroom, had a time at the end of the day where we would do IEP work and work bins. It typically ended up being catching up on work that we didn't finish in the morning for from a student being pulled for speech or OT, or maybe a student came in late. So it would kind of be a time for my paras to pull a bin and work with the kid who had finished all of their work during that day or this was the time um, that I was working with kids specifically on some of these bins, if everybody had was caught up and blah, 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 all that fun stuff. So it really depends on your classroom. I do know that there are some special ed teachers who are bloggers as well that have specific schedules for work bins. I have never done that. I know that it works. I did not have time in my schedule to do that. So if that is something that you are interested in, I recommend getting on Pinterest or Google and just kind of searching work bin schedule or task box schedule or task, whatever you call them, um, just kind of Google search or get on Pinterest and search and see how they do it um, because they are certainly going to be more of an expert at it than I am going to be. I don't can't think of like one specifically that I've read because I've read quite a few um, but I just never had time for it in my own classroom with the schedule and how I had four different grade levels. It just didn't work. Um, so can you give ex specific examples of what is stored in each work bin for different abilities and skill levels? How often do you switch out materials? So I switch out materials as often as kids need it. If they're getting bored, I'll switch them out. Typically two to four weeks. I wouldn't let it sit any longer than that. Um, IEP work bins are different because they're specific to that child, what they're working on. So I'll put in extra stuff, um, but mostly the work bins I'll change out like once a month, every couple of weeks, um, especially like if there's a holiday coming up, I'll put in some fun extra ones in there. Um, so this is, I'll just share some of these that I have from my last classroom. The others uh, were all from resources that I had, the teacher, previous teacher had left, so I left them in the classroom. Um, I got these cups at, I think Kroger, they're just colorful crayon cups. Uh, I bought them, they say the color on them. And I just put a bunch of different things in here that are the colors of the cups and it's just a basic sorting. This is gonna be one of the lower level boxes for my students who are working on maybe colors or they need the fine motor, um, like working on grass, with pick, picking things up of different um, sizes, different shapes, different textures. I just put pretty much anything or colors goes in here. You could also add in color words. If you wanted to add in note cards and have them match and put them in, you could do it that way. Um, these are just, well, there's two different things in here, actually. These are wacky links that I got from Special Needs Essentials. That website is fantastic. So if you're looking for a website that has specially curated content and um, resources for special needs, 
that is where to go. Specialkneesessentials.com. They're great. That's where I got these. These are wacky links. This is a great for fine motor. It's kind of like beading, but the straws are plastic. Um, so they're a lot of fun. But these are just dinosaur erasers from Target that were like last around Valentine's Day, maybe. Maybe this spring. And I grabbed a bunch of them because I love dinosaurs. And I'll just use them as manipulatives. So I'll either put uh, flashcards in here for numbers to do one-to-one -one correspondence, or I will stick addition subtraction flashcards in here and they'll work on that. Or maybe we can, I can pull the cups and they can do sorting, make them all the same. We could do grouping. There's just a bunch of different things that you can do with manipulatives. So you can use the same manipulatives over and over again to change out the skill that you're using them for. What else do I have here? This is a sensory bin. So when I'm doing bins, uh, work bins, I, my very first year, like straight out of college, I taught extended school year. And one of the things that I learned from that classroom was the curriculum that they had, they did centers. And what I really liked and my biggest takeaway from it was you do a center that's academic and then you do a center that's play. Not necessarily play, but this would be something that's play, right? So you're going to rotate through. So you're going to have a center that's academic, which would maybe be sorting these or doing math flashcards with the dinosaur counters. They're working on that. So then the next center that they're going to do is going to be um, something fun. So sensory. It could be dramatic play. It could be listening to music. It could be this um, sensory, this is the Mad Matter. If you don't know what Mad Matter is, oh my gosh, it's going to change your life. Target sells it now, which is so exciting. It's like kinetic sand on crack, basically. It doesn't dry up. It's, oh my gosh, I love it. But there's like brick makers. So this is my whole set that they sent me. Um, love me some Mad Matter. So then the, the center after they would do the kinetic sand, they would do something else. Maybe it would be at letters with the Adapt Peace book set. So I like to rotate them that way. And my parents know, even though we don't have a set schedule for our kids, like maybe switch them out every 10 minutes or once they finish that task, if we have like an hour at the end of the day, they finish everything, okay, it's time for IEP work bins. We're maybe gonna start with an academic task and then we're gonna do next 15 minutes is gonna be a play task. And then the next 15 minutes after that is gonna be an academic task. And it's academic and play to the kids, but they're all academic for all of your kids, okay? So you kind of have to keep that in mind. I'm saying play because it's like play to the kids. It's not academic. They're not sitting there while you're reading them a book. They're playing in sand. And it, it is fun, but it's very academic and great for them as well. Um, this is actually nothing. This is just a bin full of colorful um, reading glasses for guided reading to make it fun. I have some color-coded stickers here, or bag clips and pinchers and wands. These go in their color-coded bins. And some markers. This is just a random bin of different things for their color-coded bins. I showed you what was in here. Another great bin if you have students working on fine motor. Get little stickers. They don't have to be these. You can get stickers of any kind and write letters on a large piece of construction paper or write their name and then have them put the stickers on it. Or if you're working on letter identification, number identification, or even one-to-one -one correspondence, have them put that many stickers next to the letter on the paper. Stickers are a lot of fun for kids. Stickers are a lot of fun for me too. Um, and the smelly stickers are even better. So maybe smelly stickers could be like the reward for finishing doing their work with the stickers. Um, something else that I learned um, in a PD at my law school was I went to a core vocabulary session and the one way she practiced core vocabulary like once and more, the basic core vocab, she got these, um, and these are ones that I made from the Dollar Tree. It's just a regular plastic bin. My husband drilled a hole through the top and then I got these little pom-pom balls. They're actually the plastic ones. They from, where did I get them from? from Walmart in the party section. They don't always have them, but at seasonal times, they have these for what, I guess like party bags. I don't know what, I don't know. I never got these in a party bag when I was growing up. I don't know what they are, but they're great for fine motor. And basically what you do is the kid just has to push the ball in here. 
And my kids love this task. If you would think that having them do it over and over again, like maybe twice a week when they were doing a bin, they'd be like, okay, I can do this, Misty, I got this. But they like love this task. So I just keep them all, store them in here. I have three of these different ones. There are, you can get bigger little, these little spongy balls. I, don't, I haven't seen them any smaller. You can get different size bins. Keep it in there and that's a great fun motor task. Again, with the Target erasers, I bought them. I would probably use them for something. In my last kindergarten bin, we got all of these little tiny fruit erasers, so I could do sorting with those. Again, I just kind of collect things that I know I'm going to use. I shared this in the sight word one. I have stamps with stamp pads um, and magnetic letters for spelling. So it's really just about stocking up on things that you know you're going to use over and over with different kids for different skills. I don't want these to fall over. Um, so that's kind of where I get all my supplies from and, and things like that. Do I train my pairs to run them beforehand or is this something that I run? My The centers that I create, the IEP bins and the work bins that I curate for my kids are completely run um, by a para or me. They're simple enough where I don't have to explain what a kid's supposed to be doing. I could just say, okay, Stephanie, um, Stephanie is working on colors. She just needs to sort. And then they'll go grab this one and sort the colors. And then when they finish that task, my parent knows, okay, that now we need to go grab a play task. They'll do a play task and then the next time. And they kind of know, like, as they're working with your kids, they're learning their IEP goals too. They also should have a copy of your student's IEP goals. So whether you keep that in their IEP bins, which you probably should, put them like in a folder, keep them in an IEP bin if they're working on that. Um, but yes, my parents know how to run everything. There are centers that my kids do independently. But for the most part, most of my kids are either one-to-one -one or really small group. Uh, all right. How do you often you change out the work task? I kind of went over that. Um, I answered that whole question. How do you plan the curriculum you use for centers? I don't. I don't plan super ahead. Like I talked about lesson planning. Lesson planning for me is like the bane of my existence. I despise lesson planning. I do it because I have to. Um, mostly I follow, you know, for regular lesson planning, I follow what Janet is doing. We also had unique and news to you in my last class or my last school, so I used that, and then I kind of supplemented a lot of my own stuff because that still didn't really meet the needs of all my kids. So when it comes to like centers and things, I try to plan it, plan them based on what my kids need. I don't really make them, a, I don't wanna say they're not aligned to the standards because they are, but I, if I have a student who's in third grade, maybe they're doing multiplication, I'm not going to put a multiplication work bin. I mean, it's going to be in their IEP bin if it's an IEP goal, but I'm not going to put a multiplication bin in here if they're still working on one-to-one -one correspondence. Like, that's just silly to me. So I make work bins based off my students' needs. And most of my students are pretty much within the same one to, like, two or three year with ability level. So I can really, with the basics, you can really put different things in there for each of your kids. I hope that makes sense. Like it makes sense to me, but I don't know if like the words that are coming out of my mouth are making sense. Um, do you create all your materials before school starts or do you do them as you go? I don't know if you mean like before school, like 6 a.m. or like during summer. Both. I go to school early every day, I'm usually there 45 minutes to an hour early because I leave at 345. Like contract time, end of the day, I'm out. Like I'm the one like it is... 244 and 58 seconds and I am walking towards the front door. I do not stay after school. I come in early. It's quieter. Nobody's at the copier and I actually get things done. When I stay after school, there are other teachers who are there after school too. But usually when I come in the morning, people are still half asleep if they're there. They're like, hey, good morning. They still haven't got their coffee yet. Like we're all kind of doing our own thing. We're there to work. So I like going in early to kind of prep things like this. Like if I change out task boxes and bins and things like that, I'll do it in the morning. Um, and I do, pre I prep things like all year long. Uh, incorporating them into secondary setting with only 50 minutes with each student. So this is a question that I kind of had twice, not necessarily with secondary, but how do you 
hit IEP goals when you only see kids for 30 minutes at a time. Now I'm thinking this goes more for inclusion and resource because when you're self-contained, you see your kids all the time, right? But when you are in resource and inclusion, how do you meet the needs of your kids with IEP goals? I think that that is a completely separate I like live. Um, I think I'm going to do a different complete live on that topic because that could be its, it's its own topic. So I will come back to that in another live. Could IEP work bins be used in an inclusion setting? Absolutely. You make it work for you. If you are, if you have a kid who's in inclusion, so how I would see it working is maybe just having, um, these fit into desks. So you could have these and then the photo box, oh, let me pull it up because I guess some of you do. So these bins are just Sterilite bins. I have adaptive books in them right now. Fit into desks. So you could get one of these with a lid. I know the Iris photo boxes fit inside of this. Not like the big case, but like the individual photo cases that y'all use for task boxes and different things. They fit in here. So you could easily make, put like little er work boxes in there. You could get erasers to sort and group and count and do by color or do stickers and kind of give your kids an inclusion for those times with, excuse me, when maybe they're doing a group project and the group finishes early and your kid needs something to do while the other kids in their group are working on other classwork that like maybe spelling while everybody else is still working, uh, but your kid's group is not finished. They have stuff in their desk to do. You could easily do that. If you are the general ed teacher and you want to know if you can do IEP work bins, talk to your special ed teacher that for the kids who come into your classroom. And I absolutely think you all can make it work. It's just all about the, your setting and your kids and what your kids need. And um, it's very individualized. How do you do it with students that are limited to move for wheelchair, like if they're in a wheelchair, for rotations when it's only one para and you? My classroom, my previous classroom, um, I had a larger classroom. It was specifically built for, to be the life skills classroom. So I was very fortunate with that. Now, when I, my first year when I went in there, there was like a surplus of just stuff and furniture everywhere. So over the first year, like I always make sure that wherever I am placing furniture or a task for a student to do, or if they're going different places in the classroom where I know students are going to frequent. I always make sure that it's wheelchair accessible, even if I don't have a student in a wheelchair. You never know when you're going to get a new kid in the class. You never know. Um, maybe I used to do a lot of things like the PPC class and the gifted classes. Like you just never know. So I like to keep the room open enough to be accessible to every student, like at the drop of a hat. Like I don't have to worry about Oh, Stephanie's coming in. Stephanie's in a wheelchair. Maybe I'm collaborating with another life skills class and we have two in the same school. We got to move these desks so she, she has room to come in. Like, I don't need to move anything because my classroom is already set up to be accessible to all of my kids. So it's just something I'm very, that I, I just, I think about all the time. It's just my very, like when I'm setting up classroom, that's the first thing I come to mind. I'm putting deck, okay, can a wheelchair fit through here? So that's not an issue for me, making sure my kids can reach the IEP goal, like IEP bins and work bins and things like that. I make sure my whole entire classroom is set up that way. How do you organize your work tasks for students? When it's IEP time, what does it look like in your classroom? So IEP time in my last classroom was at the end of the day. Some students went to special, some students stayed behind. It really depended on their individualized schedules, but the, the group class schedule was IEP time at the end of the day. This either looked like kids who needed to finish work from the morning, they were finishing working up on that with me at the back table, or if they came in late, or maybe they have something to do from resource or inclusion, depending on your caseload. If they have work to finish that they didn't finish previously, we're doing it during that time. But if they finish everything, this is time to do IEP stuff. So I will have my para or paras take one or two kids and do IEP work bin stuff. It's easy for them to start off one kid on academic and one kid on play. That way they can really be one-to-one -one with the kid on academic and just kind of visually 
watch the kid doing the play, right? Um, but if it's IEP time, we'll kind of rotate through everyone. And that kind of, it's kind of just like a center rotation, um, academic play, academic play, and we just kind of work through it that way and it seems to be really beneficial. How do you organize differentiated materials for you and your para? I kind of went over this a little bit. I have different bins, so these are work bins to me. These bigger ones that I got at Target are going to be the IEP bins. You can use whatever bins that you want to store different like loose materials after I finished using them or maybe I've bought them and I'm not gonna use them yet but I need to store them. I just have like a big bin this size that's white in a cabinet and all of the manipulatives and games and resources and parts and things like that are just inside Ziploc bags that are labeled and then I just pull them out when I need them. If it's papers, things like this, or file folder games, or adapted books, or other things like that, I use the project cases, which I'll put the link in after I didn't think to put that before, but I use project cases that fit right into the filing cabinet. Uh, I have students with severe multiple disabilities. How do you incorporate work bins? I kind of went over that a little bit, but if you need more, shoot me a message. Do your students get them, or is it teacher directed? I kind of mentioned that too. So. I feel like I answered all of the questions. Um, <laughs> if I didn't, I apologize. Either leave a comment on this live and I will come back and answer all of your questions. Send a message like through the group to post a thread about it and we can all talk about it. Or you can just send me a message or email, that's fine too. I will come back and schedule another Facebook live within this group to talk about like doing IEP work in resource, I know I've taught resource, I've taught inclusion, I've co-taught before. The last three years of my life have been self-contained, but I've done the first five years of my SPED journey has been resource and inclusion. So I will do another live about doing IEP work. I know that it's a struggle. It was something that I continually would struggle with. Like the resource teacher at my last school even asked me like, what am I supposed to do? And I was like, I don't know, I think it's just a constant thing, but I will come back and schedule one of those. There will not be a scheduled live this Thursday. My family is coming into town tomorrow. So if my niece is coming, she's five. So if I can get her to do an adapted book with me, I'll pop in and kind of do like an impromptu live that y'all can catch the replay of just to show you how I use adapted books in the classroom since I can't really show you any of the kids of my future classroom uh, for confidentiality reasons. So I'll see if I can do that with her. In the meantime, I will, so next Tuesday, I'm actually flying home, so I won't be here next Tuesday or Thursday either. I'll try to do some things with Reese, though, my niece, to see if I can show you guys some things and show you how I work with some of the resources I've created and that y'all are using and have questions about. So I will schedule, we'll have the next official scheduled Facebook Live for two, like two weeks from now. So we'll have a break and then two weeks from now, and I will touch on the resource IEP goals don't have a lot of time then okay so I hope you guys have a great rest of the day I will do my best to pop in again but thank you so much for being here thank you for being a VIP and I'll see you guys soon bye